Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Today uh, I'm going to invite you to join us on a road trip. My daughter and I are travelling up to Durban, Cape Town to Durban. So uh, we'll take you along for the ride. I won't bore you with endless miles and miles of endless footage of roads. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> we will show you some footage of the, the route as we travel. Um, but uh, if we come across or when we come across places of interest, I'll uh, introduce them. If you haven't seen them before, great. If you have, just skip along to the next, uh, next part of the video. So, yeah, we've been on the road for about an hour and a half. Just gonna take a quick break, smoke break, coffee break. There's Hannah. I've got a mouthful of <laughs> something. <laughs> so, anyway guys. Cheers. Beautiful, beautiful morning, beautiful view. The roads are quite busy, it's a lot of traffic. Anyway, we'll catch you on it. Let's hit the road. of interest in history here a lot of you that travel this road know that you'll often see this building on the side of the road just outside Lanesburg and this old bridge railway bridge but this was built in I think it was 1902 it was what they call the blockhouse I think it was built during the Anglo war yeah, during the Anglo-Boer War, something like that. And uh, it was used specifically to um, protect the bridge. So the blockhouse was built by the British as a protection, uh, well, to protect the bridges against the Boers. And uh, you can see the this is a seriously thick piece of steel that's been mounted in the wall here and just enough space to stick your rifle through so that you could aim out and not get obviously not get hit from the outside in and uh, as you can see access to it is limited actually wonder how they got in there oh there we go so the door entrance would have to be accessed by a ladder and then there were various levels inside and then obviously on top there would be a watchtower and also that is thick steel with little cutouts and if I can zoom in there now you can see the little cutout over there. So they could stand inside, they stick their guns out and fire at will and be relative, well, relatively well protected by any attack from the outside. Just a little piece of history for anyone that uh, didn't realize what this was every time they drove past it. Um, it's the first time I've ever stopped to look at it. I know what it is. I've never really stopped to have a close look. And, it's uh, oh, some serious steel. Stop the bullets. Anyway, back on the road. So we've stopped. 
stopped here just outside Beaufort West for a quick coffee break and coke break and I've got to say this part of the country is usually very arid and dry and it's been uh, it's actually they've had a heck of a lot of rain by the looks of things even the dam at Beaufort West the last time I drove past there that dam was bone dry not a drop of water and it's full so you can see over there even the mountains got a green tinge to them so anyways and shade lovely spot to take a break smoke break coffee break and something I'm going to punt business here quickly. Dried mango. Preserve, eh? Oh. Of course you can. I don't like mango, but these are good. Say that again. I don't like mango, but these are good. There it is. From the horse's mouth. <laughs> so, this is preservative free dried mango. It doesn't have SO2, which is uh, the product that they use to preserve color and um, color and shelf life and dried fruits. And this one doesn't have it in it, so the color is a little bit darker than what uh, you normally get dried mango, but it's much healthier. And uh, yes, I sell it. So we produced it in West Africa uh, last year, middle of last year, and we shipped a container out to South Africa. So anyone out there, if you know of anyone that wants to buy bulk or just small packs, um, I have 250 gram packs, 500 gram packs, and I've got two and a half kilogram packs, or you can buy a box, which is 10 kilos. So I'll put my number in the description or in the description of the video or I'll put on post it on the video. You're welcome to contact me, we can ship countrywide. And uh, yeah, healthy snack. Very, very tasty. In fact, you'll be long pressed to find dried mango that tastes as good as this. Seriously. So Share the video guys, share the dried mangoes, buy some, it uh, benefits everybody, benefits you, benefits us. Anyway, we must hit the road again, we still got, what, three, four, five, five, five hours, six hours, roughly, to go to our overnight stop, Bloemfontein, we'll be spending the night at, uh, um, a couple that I've known since I was about five years of age they uh, unofficially they are my godparents and yeah he's a uh, that they, they, they've been an integral part of my upbringing um, conservation my love for conservation my uh, for those that don't know I have a, a weird fascination of uh, crocodiles and a healthy respect for hippo and Dave is the guy that taught me that take a little break here we're on the banks of the orange river I'm gonna see if I can get some drone footage of the river I see there's a little road going down the side here so Hannah Hannah will make us some lunch 
and uh, find a little spot that we can just chill. We've got about two and a half hours left of our trip. And then we'll continue. But I'm hoping that this little road gets us close to the river. Closer to the river. And we can have a little spot to chill out and have a picnic. Oh well, that's quite nice. We've got a little spot here under the bridge, nice and shady. And the river is just down here. If I can jump the fence, I'll go down there. But there's the Orange River. So this river begins in Lesotho, which is a landlocked country in South Africa, well, within the borders of South Africa. And uh, it starts as the Senku River and then heads down through, Lesotho, through the Lesotho Highlands into South Africa, borders South Africa and Lesotho for a, a, a while and then flows in a westward direction across most, well, at least half of the country. I think it's about, a, I think it's about 1,600 kilometers long, the river. And it then flows out at Alexander Bay, Alexandra Bay um, on the border of South Africa and Namibia. For our foreign viewers that haven't been to South Africa, it is the largest river. I think with the Vaal River being the second largest. And I think the Vaal River flows into the Orange River. I'll have to go back and check my geography again. But uh, at the moment, there's been quite a lot of rain on the interior. So the river is actually flowing. Nice and strong. And uh, very good yellow fish fishing in this river. There are a ton of guys out there that do a lot of videos on yellowfish fishing. You also catch uh, carp and uh, catfish, barbel, in this river. Big ones, I might add. But the sport fishing side of it is the, um, the yellowfish which you target. This would be a little bit too strong for them now. I don't think you'd get that, get much luck. But normally you would target them in the rapids of the river. So you'd find a place where the river narrows a bit and you can actually walk in there. And you fish for them either with a fly rod with fly or small rapalas or small spinners. And they give a very good fight. It's a, a lovely species to target. Let me see if I can get the drone up. Get some footage with the drone. Take it over. See you later. I'm not 
going to show any addresses. But uh, you will be you'll be excused for thinking that this man is Santa Claus. <laughs> but, but this is the real crocodile Dundee. <laughs> So, uh, you, you? Folks, you did well, man. Yeah, well done. And, but, but we're scraping the bottom of the barrel now. What, with Nissan? It's a Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> you have buckies and then you have Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah. in, uh,